Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look at gravitational potential energy as it applies to something that is out in space. Of course, on the surface of the Earth, and let's do a comparison, we have a constant force of gravity since the heights that we're dealing with are very small, so the force here is not much different than the force at the ceiling. So therefore, if we try to find the work done by the force of gravity on an object that starts at a particular height and then it gets pulled by gravity down to the floor, is simply the force times displacement or the dot product between the two. And of course, that's the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. But since the direction of the force and the direction of the displacement is in the same direction, of course, that's why the angle is zero degrees and the cosine of zero is one. So it's simply a product of the force times the displacement. If we want to calculate that using an integral, well, we can do that, but it's not really necessary, but we do it for comparison. So all the work done is going to be equal to the sum of all the work done, small little individual little pieces of work done as we slowly pull the object down. Well, not we, but the force of gravity pulls the object down. And so we're going to integrate all those little pieces of work done. It's going to be the force times a small amount of displacement. We're going to start at height h and pull down all the way down to zero. So it's going to be the force of gravity, which is gmm over r squared. Now in this case, r doesn't change because it's the radius of the Earth. So h is so small here that essentially r doesn't change. And so it's simply an integral of dy, and that is y. We put in the, the limits and we get minus h. And of course, instead of writing gm big m over r squared, we can set that equal to the force of gravity equal to mg. So we replace this by mg. And so it simply becomes the work done is minus mgh. And so therefore, the potential energy starting at height h and ending up at zero is going to be equal to minus mgh because it's equal to the work done and that's relative to potential energy being zero at this point so it's going to be negative after that. So now let's go to space and let's pick a point very far away so we put a mass really far away at a distance relatively close to infinity and now we allow the force gravity to bring the object to the surface of the Earth. So we do the very same thing. We say that the work done is equal to the integral of all the little dw's, meaning all the little work done by moving a small infinitesimal amount of dr. We add them all up going all the way to the Earth. And so again, we have the force of gravity times the displacement for one of the little segments. We sum them all up going from infinity all the way to the radius of the Earth. Now, g, m, and m, those are constants, but r in this case is not. r is going to vary, which of course causes the force of gravity to vary. And so we end up with r to the neg negative 2 times dr, since of course r squared was in the denominator. When we integrate that, we get the negative 1 over r, we put the negative in front, we plug in the limits, and so notice that we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 over radius of the Earth. Plug in the lower limit, we get 1 over infinity. Of course, 1 over infinity is essentially 0. And so we end up with the work done by gravity to pull an object from very, very far away all the way to the surface of the Earth is equal to this, minus g little m big M over the radius of the Earth. And so we can then also say that the potential energy lost because we start over here and as we get pulled in by gravity the energy loss is going to be a minus gm big m over r the radius of the earth now if we define the potential energy to be zero at this point just like we did over here zero at infinity then of course the potential energy will equal the work done to get it here and so the potential energy at infinity is zero and therefore the potential energy on the surface of the earth is a negative gm big m over r of course, the big M is the mass of the Earth. As an example, let's say we have a satellite of 1,000 kilograms at a height of 500 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Potential energy of that satellite will be minus g m m over r. Here's the constant of gravity, the mass of the satellite, the mass of the Earth, and the distance from the center of the Earth, which is the radius of the Earth, plus the height above the surface of the satellite. When you plug that into a calculator, you end up with a negative 5.8 times 10 to the 10 joules. Again, negative, of course, because it is zero at infinity, and therefore negative as you get closer. And that is how it's done.